Hi everyone. Today we're going to go through a tutorial on how to use Adobe InDesign. So but you should have all have downloaded the Adobe software by now and what I'm going to do is just click to open the Adobe InDesign. It may take a few minutes for InDesign to come up. As I said in the previous um, presentation talking about storyboarding, uh, InDesign is really the best tool to use to create print materials, so newsletters, posters, uh, reports, books. Um, a lot of times people go to PowerPoint because it's more accessible, but it's really not meant to lay out documents. It's poor at handling text and doing professional printing and all of that. So learning how to use InDesign, once you get over the learning curve, which is a little steep, then you should really be able to be successful at using the software to communicate complex scientific um, material or data. Okay. And see now the program is coming up with all of the panels and tools here and yours may look a little bit different than mine because I use InDesign almost every day so all of my different windows here along the right hand side probably look very different from yours so I'm always moving them around the page and using a lot of things at once. And if this is one of the first times you've used it, an uh, introductory dialog box is going to open automatically. And feel free to use the resources that Adobe has here. Um, they also have a lot of tutorials online on YouTube as well as on the Adobe site. Um, and they can also stock images. They can teach you a lot about how to use it uh, in addition to what we're going to go through. But I'm just going to close this dialog box. Now I'm going to go to edit and um, there's a few differences between the Apple Mac version of InDesign and Windows version. So in the Windows version under edit there's preferences but mine does not have that because I'm using a Mac. So mine is going to be under about uh, InDesign CC here at the top that's me, you know my email, preferences, and I'm going to go to units and increments. And we want to change the, the ruler to be in inches for me. If you prefer to do things in centimeters, you can do that. Um, points or picas, it's hard for most people to think in points and picas, so um, a lot of times you'll want to change this right away. And we're going to leave the rest of the settings the same. Now we're going to go to open a new document. So go to File, New, Document. And we have this dialog box that has come up and we need to select the preferences we want for the document. So you can have pages that face each other, so the first and second will be next to each other, um, and I'm going to keep this checked so that I'm viewing the pages as spreads. And we can change the number of pages, we can change the orientation is, letter, or legal, tabloid, business card, anything. Um, the width and height, I'll leave the same as what it is here, 8.5 by 11. You can change the columns and the gutter. Um, the margins, so 0.5 inch all around top, bottom, inside and outside is usually best, although you can play with them a little bit. Then you see there's a drop down arrow here next to bleed and slug, so if we drop it down we can see the bleed and slug and this mainly is part of the 
the document that extends past the paper boundary um, to account for inaccuracy when doing professional printing. When you trim the pages, sometimes there might be a little like a one sixteenth of an inch difference. So you go outside the page to make sure that you don't have any white spaces on the outside if you have a photo that goes all the way to the edge. And then the slug also deals with um, any notes or comments you want to give to a professional printer. And let's change this to have a bleed on our page. So right now it's locked, so they'll all, all the settings will be the same if I change one. So I'm going to change this to 0.25. Then you can see all the rest changed automatically. So we can say OK. And here is our document. So the black line, let's go to our arrow. This black line here is the boundary of the paper, so the actual paper itself. The purple and pink lines here are going to show your margins. Remember we had 0.5 on all of our margins. And then the red line is the bleed on the outside. So this is outside the paper, but maybe we still want something to go all the way to the edge. Then we also have palettes in InDesign. And these are tools or windows that have special functions that help you. So palettes that open automatically with the program are this whole control panel here at the top these tools along the side and then you can expand palettes uh, and panels or collapse them so here are some that I have that are expanded but I can put them in here to collapse them so, let's, so right now they're all collapsed you can see pages layers links you might have a number of things here and if you can never find one of your items you can always go to window and these are all of the panels. So here's the pages. You can see it's already open. But let's pick one that's not open just to see. So one I don't have open right now <clears throat> is, let's see, transform. So this has to do with uh, objects. So if I click it, you can see it's just popped open here, the panel. And then I can always put it in with the rest of them here and then I can open and close them. So swatches, color, we'll go through all of these things. So first we're going to do is insert and resize an image. So in order to insert an image you don't just want to copy and paste it, you want to place it into the document. What this does is it links your placed image with the InDesign file instead of saving it in it. So the file size will not get enormous as it does in Illustrator. So I'll go to File here at the top, Place. And I'm going to go to Pictures, Assateague Island, National Seashore. We did a project there. And I'm just going to choose, hopefully, a good photo. Of some beach. There we go. So let's use this one. Click open. Now you can see the picture is attached to my cursor. So I can place it anywhere in the document. Um, and place your image by just clicking one time. Do not click and drag the image to place it. So, so click it one time. And you can see the image is opened up. And we can resize the image. We can move it around. So move it wherever we want. And then we can use the corner to resize the image. So in Illustrator, to resize an image proportionally, you have to hold down the Shift key. In InDesign, you have to hold down Shift and Control on Windows or Shift and Command on a Mac. So I'm going to hold both those down on my computer. And you can see it's, it's going to proportionally change the image size. 
Okay, I'm just going to fill the image in the space here. Now, let's say we only hold down the shift key. This is going to change the frame the image is in, but not the image itself. So you can see the frame is changing and it's proportional, but not the image. Now, I always use Control or Command Z to go back, so I'm going to go back. Okay, if we use the Control or Command key to change the image, we end up changing the image um, and frame, but it's not proportional. So see how the image is becoming smushed or stretched out? So obviously this is a mistake that's commonly made. Um, and I'm going to go back. So we want their image to remain proportional. So now that we have this image, we this image is linked into the file, as I said. So if you go to Window, Links, or if your links is already open over here on your panel, you can click it, and it opens. And here's the image. So it tells you if you hover over it where it came from. You know, I took it in Astigue Island, so it's showing me that information. Um, and then also some other information down here in the bottom about the image. So we've scaled it almost 75%. It's an RGB color space. We've talked a lot about color already. The uh, pixels per inch, so it's effectively 401 DPI or pixels per inch. Uh, the dimensions, the date. Uh, I took the picture down here as well as the date we're putting it in. Um, so all this information is here. Jumping ahead a little bit keep following along. So, we can edit this picture using Photoshop. If we click here, it edits the original and that may open in Photoshop or it may open in some other picture viewer. So what I like to do is is right click on it and edit with and then choose Photoshop if I want to edit with Photoshop or if this were a conceptual diagram I would choose to edit with Illustrator. Additionally if you edit a link or if you move a link um, you might have some problems here so if you edit it a little triangle will come up here and it'll say we need to update this link and so you can just click on it and it will resave it with the new one you've edited. Or if you move the file, so if I move this file out of where it's located, then the computer is looking for the file and it can't find it. So we have to relink the file. So let's actually do that and see what happens. So I'm going to go to the file which, let's see what file number it was, 101 and I'm going to move it to the desktop. So now we have this question mark it says it's missing. We don't know where it is. So I'm going to go to this little relink and now it's saying, okay, it was in this folder now where is it? We know we moved to the desktop, right? So we can go to desktop and go to the picture, here it is, and say open. And now it's relinked. Same thing for when you edit a, an image. It'll say to update it or if you move it, it'll have to relink it. Okay. So now I'm going to go on to creating and resizing shapes. So just in case I need this image later, I'm going to move it to the side here just by clicking it with the black arrow and moving it over. Um, although you can delete it if you like. And what we're going to do first is we're going to create an ellipse. So over here in the tools, you can see where is there an ellipse? Any of the tools here with a little black triangle in the lower right corner means there's more tools underneath. 
So if I click on this and hold it down, you can see there's also an ellipse, there's also a polygon. So I'm going to click ellipse, and now my cursor has changed to this crosshatch. And if I click and hold, I can drag my cursor to create an ellipse. And what I want to do is create a proportional ellipse. So I'm going to delete this one. And I'm going to hold the shift key down to drag an ellipse. Uh, oh, excuse me. So holding the shift key down will make it a perfect circle, or a perfect square, or a perfect polygon, whichever we choose. So I'm going to let go of the shift key and just do an ellipse shape. So there we go. Now use the selection tool. We didn't talk about this yet, but it's also in Illustrator, so hopefully you have some experience. The black arrow is a direct selection tool, selecting things exactly, the whole object. The white arrow selects parts of the object. So here I've just selected this little anchor point, and then I can, I can edit it. So it's very important to know which arrow you're using because if I want to move this object, I want to use a black arrow. If I have the white arrow by accident, I try to move it, it might mess up the object. I might move something else by accident. Right? Okay, so let's go back. Okay, so we have our ellipse. And we can resize it using the corner, similar, you know, as we did, either proportionally or not proportionally. And let's move it to the bottom corner of the document. Just keep it here for now. Obviously, text is one of the main things we're going to have in the document. We stress using 50-50 text graphics. So if I create a text box, I can just select the T here, Type Tool. There's other tools underneath, but we just want to do the Type Tool. And then I can click and drag a box to fill with text. And I don't have any text that I want to put in here. You know, you can put nonsense text. Or something that's really useful is filling with placeholder text. So you can type directly into the box. You can copy and paste text in from a document. Or you can um, import text into your document from a Word document or other documents. Um, but for now, what I'm going to do is go to Type. And all the way at the bottom, it says Fill with Placeholder Text. This is Latin text. can be good for giving you a word count of about how many words you need someone to write. And you can see it splits into paragraphs as well. And so I have the text here. I'll just go back to my black arrow and select it. And I can see information about it, the size of the text box, um, you know, all the information I need to know. But what we want to do is go to the character palette. So if we go to Window, Type and Tables, and choose Character, then we get this palette. I'm just going to bring it up here. This tells us what our font is. Um, the size of the font, the spacing between the lines, um, and some other metrics. And if you're not seeing all of this, um, you can, so some object, uh, excuse me, options might be hidden. So always show options so you can see all the options available. And I'll also open the paragraph palette. So you can either go to window, type in tables, paragraph. Or you can open your paragraph palette from the side if it's already open. And I'll just open this additionally by itself so we can see both here. And this is going to give you information about the text alignment. Is it center aligned, left aligned, right aligned? Is it justified? Um, do you have a space you know, before or after the last line, the last row? Is it hyphenated? Um, often we do not want things to be hyphenated, so I'm going to click hyphenate there. And when I did that, it's moved the text down and off of our text box. So you can see this little red square means there's more text and we're not seeing it right now. 
So you can either double click here, or if you click on this box, now the text is in my cursor, and I can make a new text box for that extra text, but I'm gonna just show it here. Okay, you can also click and drag this up or down. You can see all text is being hidden. Okay, now to select text, you can either double click on this box and then it goes to be a text from, and you can select it here, or you can, when it's not selected, you can go to the T and select it like this. So I selected this text and uh, I'm going to change the font. So let's change it to um, Calibri and let's bump the size up. So this is the size here and then this is an auto right now but it's the spacing between the lines so if we wanted it to be more space you see how the lines it gets further apart or less space then it gets smushed together. Well, let's just do auto for now. And so I put my font up to 16 and then let's see so we changed the font type, size, the letting, and then the other things you can change are, let's look at this, this paragraph here. So these metrics have to do with how much space are between the letters. So if there's less space, Let's skip this one for now and go to this one here. So right now what I've done is all of the, the letters are very close together. It can be even closer together. Now eventually I'm going to zoom in so command plus or control plus. So you can really see the difference here. So you can see these words are really, really close together, while these ones are not. And when you select the text, you'll see the changes here. So see 0, negative 75, or they can be further apart. So a little further apart, way further apart. So sometimes if you have an orphan or a widow at the end of a line, you might want to just smush it up a little bit to get it to, to stay on the previous line. But generally, you don't want to be changing this too much because it becomes difficult to read. Um, and then you can also change how much the letters are taller or more compressed or how wide they are. So these are the, the letters themselves are being stretched or compressed. Go back to 100 for all these things. Um, and then you can also make them higher or lower. So here, you see we're moving this, these letters up really high. So if you had like a, a square root or something, you can, you can do that. So all these I think are back to normal now. Now let's use the paragraph palette to change alignment. So I'll we'll select some of this and you can see we're aligned left and all these usually tell you what they do. So aligned center, aligned on the right, justified. Um, I don't really recommend justifying because it can be harder for people to read. Um, although they do it in newspapers, you can also get some weird spaces between words. So I'm just going to leave it as left aligned for now can also change indentation, so whether the whole paragraph is indented and by how much, or from the other side. Have the first lines of the paragraphs be indented.
have the first lines be lower, though the space between the paragraphs, or space after the last line, um, to have a large beginning of the, <laughs> this is like a newspaper again, so the first letter of the paragraph is really huge. So all of these options, and if you're missing any options, you might have the hide options, so just show the options here. And again, usually we do not have to be donated. So I already showed you this threading text boxes. Um, this is what this is here. So now these two text boxes are separate, but obviously this text is connected. So if we delete some text up here, the text from this other box is going to start moving up. And you see we're still not showing all of the text here. So let's show all of the text. It's a lot of text. We also made half of it a lot bigger, but that's okay. And you can show whether or not where the text boxes are connected. I have this turned off, I don't use it, but under View, Extras, you can show the text threads here. So if I show them, you can see this is connected to this box there. Or I can hide the text threads. I can also hide the f edges of the frames. So see the frame edges. They'll only be there if it's selected. Let's show the, the frame edges. Okay. And I'm going to change this to actually follow the tutorial and make two columns. So, see, we have a lot of text here. Just change these to be columns. And InDesign has does have this guide to have your columns be even. See here? So this green line, when it shows, it's telling you that now this is exactly the same height. And I'll just go up a little bit. So there we go. Now our columns are about the same. <laughs> Um, first we have to select the object that we want to wrap around, okay? Then we can wrap around the bounding box, so we select the ellipse. The bounding box is this rectangle all the way around, but we don't want to wrap it all the way around, just up to the edge of the ellipse. So if I click object shape, could be any shape at all, could be even a weird shape of an animal, um, then I can have it wrap around there. And since it's a circular object, it wraps the same around all the sides. So I can, can see now that the light, this light color is how much wrapping we're doing. Now if we select these text boxes and group them together, when we move them, the text is going to move um, based on where the box is because of the text wrapping. Additionally, um, similar to Illustrator, we can add colors. So this is not part of the tutorial, but I'll just briefly talk about it with you. So you have the color palette here. If we select the ellipse and the color, let's go to, let's see, we're showing our options. I'm going to bring this out. And we can click any of these. So right now I'm changing the fill and this, we want to change the stroke, we select the stroke here, and then you can either double click on it to change it, let's do pink, or double click here to change this color, and we can't really see the stroke because it's really light right now, 
it's very thin stroke. But if we go to the stroke palette, you can see the weight is here. Very similar to in Illustrator. So you can you can Im increase the stroke. And you can align it, you can have it the, can change the joints, align it to the outside or inside edge, inside edge, outside edge, the center. Um, and then you can also see those things here. So you can change the, the thickness as well here and the color, see colors, and here. Um, and then you should have downloaded a swatch library. So in the swatches, if we go to swatch, whether you go to window swatch or if you have your swatches open, um, you can load swatches and then choose the swatch library from wherever you downloaded it. Um, layers, very similar. Pages, so let's say you just made the one page document but now you realize you need six pages. You can just go to layout, pages, add pages, they'll just be after. Or if you insert pages, you can choose to insert one page, say three pages, after page one. So it, it added the three pages here. And then with the facing pages, you can see that the, the pages here are facing each other. So I'm gonna zoom out so you can see. Um, and then you can you know begin to populate your document. And if you want to go directly to one of the pages, you can click it here. And on your pages palette, you can insert and move pages, delete them as well. So there's a lot of options and a lot of ways to do everything in InDesign. Um, so good luck. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me, of course. Um, my email, afries at umcs.edu. Thanks.